Hey everybody, I'm making this video for everybody who is curious about the ivermectin for cancer information that I've posted, as well as, of course, fenbendazole. My oldest two kids' father was diagnosed with stage 4 non-small cell lung cancer in May of 2019. Soon after that diagnosis, he began a combination treatment of Keytruda and a chemo. The we also learned about Joe Tippin's fenbendazole at the time. Well, I'm in Texas and he's in Oklahoma, but I do all the research and send him the information and tell him what supplements and stuff to get. So we begin other supplements as well, along with Joe Tipton's protocol. He was doing Joe Tipton's protocol, the original protocol is three days on and four days off. He continued this protocol through September when he received his first post-treatment scan. His oncologist called him and let him know the bad news. Treatment had failed. She would no longer be doing the Keytruda or the chemotherapy. He needed to get into a trial. They found a really large mass that was actually pulling down his lung it was so heavy. He was to go to MD Anderson in Oklahoma City and see about getting into a trial. Well, when we found out that this treatment had failed, of course, you know the prognosis, failed treatment and needing to get into a trial. This is an emergency situation. So at that point, we added in ivermectin. He began it to rotate ivermectin with the fenbendazole. He was doing approximately 23 milligrams three days in a row a week and fenbendazole on the days that he did not take the ivermectin. Well, he wasn't able to get into a trial at MD Anderson and so he returned to his oncologist. This is in November. His oncologist was going to do a last stitch chemo which was a lot harsher. Um, he requested at this point to get a PET scan because his insurance would allow it since they'd found something new that needed to be researched further. He was due to have the new chemo, I believe it was on a Thursday. His oncologist called him just a couple days before that and told him he no longer needed a chemo. He had such progress, he could do immunotherapy only. Now remember, this is from failed treatment scan in September to improving enough that he did not even need chemotherapy and could do immunotherapy by itself from September to November, two scans, such a difference. Yes, he did continue the fenbendazole, but he added ivermectin into that during that time. Now, we can't say what made the difference. We really can't, but we do know he had no standard treatment at all during that period of time. We also know that he felt so good when he took that ivermectin. He felt a difference. 
he told me, now he's in Oklahoma again, and I'm in Texas, he told me, it may just be in my head, but I really feel this stuff is strong. I feel a difference, like something's happening, and I don't know, I'm optimistic, but I don't want to think something's going on and it's not. Well, we made some changes to the protocol because, of course, ivermectin long-term use is not studied. Um, he does now take ivermectin three days a week still. He recently had a two-week break from that, um, any of it, just to kind of refresh his body. But he is now doing ivermectin three days a week, but he is having one day break in between that. So it'll be ivermectin, fenbendazole, ivermectin, fenbendazole, fenbendazole, fenbendazole. So, and he is taking still the 23 milligrams. Now the 23 milligrams would be close to the FLCC protocol um, dosage for somebody with COVID for his weight, so that's not too much for him. Now, the long-term use of it has not been studied, so we can't give any advice on that. I'm not advising anybody to take ivermectin. I'm not telling anybody to take fenbendazole or any other supplements. I'm just telling you our situation, what's happened, look into this stuff i'm really convinced after this that people really need to look into a home protocol not even ivermectin or fenbendazole but something to do at home people go and get treatment but they do nothing at home and they just hope that the treatment the one day a week or one day every three weeks is helping them when you have so much power over what you're doing at home all of those other days. If you're on immunotherapy, what you do at home can actually make the difference whether or not immunotherapy works. Now, it doesn't work for everybody, but even somebody who immunotherapy would work for, if you do the wrong things, you can make it not work for you. So it's really important to do your research. Go on Facebook. Find these groups that are out there to help you. Do not just rely on standard treatment to save yourselves. You can, you can save yourself by doing your own things at home. Now, I'm not telling you that he's cured by any means. But what I am telling you is he's had time where he doesn't have to even do chemotherapy. These are actually days of living, not being sick. And if you or somebody you love can have this type of progress and live some of your days better, it's worth it. Please do your research. Don't just rely on your doctors. Doctors do amazing things. But there's a lot of amazing things that you can do for yourself. Anyways, I'm really emotional at this point. So I am going to go ahead and get off. But I appreciate everybody who's reaching out and asking questions. I'm happy to answer questions and let you know our story. If you have other questions, then I'll keep you updated. But again, be your own advocate. If you don't have the energy to advocate for yourself, family members, people who love you, step up to the plate. You can be that person for somebody who needs it. Don't leave it all on them.
do something wonderful and help somebody. Thank you for watching.